In this video, we're going to talk about section 3.2, applying the properties of rational exponents. In this section, we're going to talk about a lot of things, uh, the biggest one being um, simplifying radicals. Um, in this video, we're just going to show you uh, a couple of examples, which tend to be the trickiest for some students. Um, and I started by writing down some of the rules to simplify by um, in the yellow box. Make sure you write those down and uh, kind of pay attention to those things as we simplify anything uh, that has a radical sign. So the first thing, of course, is to remove all perfect nth powers. When we talked about square roots, we, we removed all perfect squares. Um, now that we're talking about nth roots and so on, we'll be removing any uh, nth powers. Uh, secondly, uh, no fractions in the radical whatsoever, and that's kind of what we're going to look at in this uh, video. And then thirdly, we should have no radicals in the denominator. Um, I'm starting off with example one, which is something that you should already be able to simplify, um, and I'm going to kind of use that as a basis to build off of. If you take a look at uh, example one, we have the square root of seven thirds, um, and if you recall, what we would do if we had the square root of a fraction is we can just square root the numerator and the denominator separately, like so, and then. Um, we have to take care of that radical in the denominator. We're kind of violating that third rule. Um, and if you recall, we did something called rationalizing the denominator. And since it's a, it was a square root, um, all we had to do is multiply the top and bottom by whatever the square root uh, was that we had in the denominator, in this case, the square root of 3. So when we simplified that, uh, 7 times the square root of 3, or excuse me, the square root of 7 times the square root of 3, would be the square root of 7 times 3. Since they're both inside the, the square root sign, we can put them together. And if I have the square root of 3 times 3, you remember the, the whole idea is if, if our index, and since there's no index written here, we know it's a square root, right? It's, um, it's not written. We're just looking for a pair of numbers to pull out. So I can pull out a 3. And so if we rewrite this, we really have the square root of 21 over the number 3. Now again, some students are tempted to divide 21 by 3, um, but remember, that number in the top is not 21. It's the square root of 21, which is not divisible by 3. Um, since one's in the square root and one's not, we have to be kind of hands-off. So to build upon that, we're going to look at the following example, which is new. We have the fifth root of 5 ninths. What we could do to start is the same thing we did before. I'm going to take the fifth root of the numerator... So I'm going to do the fifth root of 5 over the fifth root of the denominator, 9. Now, what we want to do is try to simplify the radicals. Now, it's tempting to think that 5 in the top is a perfect power of 5, but it's, it's really not. Um, remember, if, if we have an index of 5 here, we have to see um, 5 of the same factors inside before we can pull anything out. Now, since 5 can't be broken down... I can't really mess with the, the numerator all, at all. However, the denominator, 9, um, I can break that down into a 3 times a 3. And what we're going to try to do now is simplify this. I have the fifth root of 5 over the fifth root of 3 times 3. Now, we can't leave a radical in the denominator, uh, much like we couldn't in the first example. So what I have to do is rationalize the denominator and make it a perfect fifth power. Right now I only have one, two factors of three. But since my index is a five, I have to give this radical three more threes to make it a perfect fifth power, or fifth, uh, um, something that we can pull out uh, a factor of three. So if I have a fifth root, I have to multiply the top and bottom by a fifth root. And since I only have two factors of three, I need to give it two more, or excuse me, three more factors of three in the denominator. If I do that to, to the denominator, I have to do the same exact thing to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply the top by uh, three more factors of three. So if we kind of simplify this, in the top, since we both have radicals that have fifth roots, I can combine all of this good stuff together. And notice how there's not any one factor repeated five times. So they're all stuck inside of the radical in the top. So I have a fifth root of 5 times 3 times 3 times 3 um, is really 5 times 27, which I think is going to be 
what, uh, 135. And in the denominator, what we have is the fifth root of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 threes. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 threes. Since I have five of them in a fifth root, I can pull one out. So my final answer here would be the fifth root of 135, all of that over the number 3. Now what I'd like you guys to try right now is example 3. And let's see if you guys can come with a good idea of how to do this tomorrow. I'm going to give you the third root, or the, the cube root of, the fraction 2. So I'm going to give you the, the cube root of, of 2 thirds, and let's see how you guys do on that one.